Hello, everybody. It's Pastor Craig once again coming to you from Bethlehem Lutheran Church, and this is our weekly Sunday school update and review. Uh, this week we will be in Lesson 7, which is Fiery Directions Moses. And so we get the account of the burning bush and how God reveals himself to Moses. Uh, the portion of Scripture that this, is ta- this lesson is taken from is Exodus chapter 2, verses 23 Uh, through chapter 3, verses 22. And so, uh, let us begin with the Word of God. During During those many days, the king of Egypt died, and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God, and God heard their groaning, and God remembered His covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel and God knew. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, and it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why this bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, and the Jezebites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel came, has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you might bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mount. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have observed you and what has been done to you in Egypt. And I promise I will be will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, and the Jezebites, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they will listen to your voice, and you, will, and you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us, and now please let us go, to, uh, go a three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless compelled by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders that I will do in it. After that, he will let you go. And I will give his people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And when you go, you shall not go empty. But each woman shall ask of her neighbor and any woman who lives in her house for silver and gold jewelry for clothing. You shall put them on your sons and on your daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. This is the word of the Lord. So as we read through this lesson and we talk about it, um, we look uh, or we start to begin 
to look at what it means and, and the law gospel aspect of it. And so that law aspect of this, this, this lesson is that you know, we turn away from God and, and we see no need for him in our lives so often. Um, if you recall in the reading, when God tells Moses to go uh, to, to his people, Moses keeps making excuses. Who am I to do this? What am I going to tell him your name is? You know, over and over, trying to find ways to get out of what God has done for us. Um, he, he didn't really want to be that person. Uh, he was fine being out in the wilderness. Remember, he's out in the wilderness now, had gone to his father-in-law, or you know, had fled because he had, he had killed a, the, the servant or killed that, that, that slave uh, taskmaster when he was back in Egypt. And, and so he had to flee. And so he was running. Um, and he spent uh, this 40 years in, the, in that, in that uh, desert wilderness um, tending flocks. But now God calls him back. Um, and this is the same for us. We, we spend our lives before we have faith in, in a wilderness, uh, not wanting to know God, rejecting him. But when God calls us and that faith is instilled in us, uh, we go. And that is uh, the gospel acts aspect of this lesson as well, that God reveals himself and his great love for us in his plan of salvation, which is fulfilled uh, through the life, death, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. And so ultimately, and God's plan for us is revealed to us. For Moses, it was revealed um, in uh, you know, what God wanted him to immediately do, go to Egypt, uh, take the people into the wilderness that, that there would be, you know, we know eventually there would be the plagues, the ten plagues that would strike the Egyptians, culminating in that tenth plague, the, the plague of the uh, the death of the unborn, or sorry, the death of the firstborn sons. Um, and that, that is where the Passover is instituted. And that blood of the lamb is is shed for, this, for the safety of God's people. We say ultimately the blood of the lamb of Jesus Christ is shed for us on the cross, so that we are delivered not out, uh, out, of, out of the grips of death and the devil and are, are delivered into uh, God's loving arms. So that's the gospel aspect of this. And so that helps us to remember that you know, the Bible truth is that, that God shows us who he is. He shows us uh, uh, by, you know, he shows Moses by, in the burning bush and gives him his name, I am who I am. This is where we get the, the word Yahweh from as it's the first letters of the Hebrew, I am who I am, for each of those words. Um, and and that, that gives us the word Yahweh. Um, but he shows us who he is. And ultimately, he shows us who he is in the cross. He shows us who he is as Christ uh, comes and dies for us. For this week's memory verse in class, or if you want to give them something to contemplate and to, to, to read and to study and meditate on, it's from Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. I am your God, and I will strengthen you. And this helps to remind us of, of what Christ has done for us and what God does for us uh, throughout, uh, throughout our, our lives. Now, as far as the confirmation connection goes, uh, you'll see it up here on the screen. It's the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Now, what does this mean? God's name is certainly holy in itself, but we pray in this petition that it may be kept holy among us also. How is God's name kept holy? God's name is kept holy when the word of God is taught in its truth and purity, and we as the children of God also leave holy lives according to it. Uh, help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. But anyone who teaches or lives contrary to God's word profanes the name of God among us. Protect us from this, Heavenly Father. And so when we look to the first petition, you know, hallowed be thy name, we see God giving us his name in this lesson. We see him giving us, I am who I am. Tell them, I am sent you. And so when we look to the New Testament and when uh, Jesus speaks about himself, he often uses that phrase, I am. I am the, uh, you know, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, that wasn't lost on his listeners in the, in, during his day. They knew when he was saying, I am, that he was saying he was God. And indeed, he is God. And so that uh, shows us who Christ is as well. And so this, this overall uh, lesson, you know, there's this, 
that Moses is mirac miraculously rescued, uh, you know, through the waters of the Nile when he starts his life by Pharaoh's daughter, and he he's brought into Pharaoh's uh, court and is raised as as a high-ranking uh, member of the family. Um, but then he has to escape the condemnation pronounced on, uh, you know, but then he was able to escape that, that death sentence that was given to the other Hebrew boys. But he has to leave it all behind whenever he uh, flees to Midian. Um, and there is where we pick this account up, that he's in Midian and he encounters the living God in that burning bush. And through this encounter, and then God directs and, and equips Moses to be able to rescue his chosen people from their slavery in Egypt. And it shows how God continues to bless his people. Now, when we look at this and we see our identity, so what does that mean for us? You know, that God has revealed himself to me as well in his word and his sacraments and has called me to be his own. And so because of that, uh, I can live out the calling that I've been given, that I, you know, I listen to God through his word and I thank and praise and serve and obey him every day. And that is, that is what we're able to do because of this. Now, whenever we look to our, um, you know, what we will be wanting the kids to know, um, you know, that God shows us who he is. And so for those early childhood uh, kids, I want them to come away knowing that, you know, that, that God talks to them as well. Maybe not through a burning bush, but... He talks to them through his word, through uh, through the Bible. Um, he talks to them uh, when they are in church and listening to the sermon as God's word is preached to them. So God continues to still come to them uh, today in a, in a miraculous way as well. And for those older kids, they can understand that as well, and that, that God is who he says he is. He is the one true God. And that they can be able to understand that our Savior God reveals who he is through his word that they find out who God is uh, by going to his word and, and being uh, exposed to God's word and reading and, and learning and inwardly digesting all that the Bible has for us. And they can hopefully can express that from, from what they read, uh, who God is and how he desires that we approach him in holiness. As we remember, God uh, instructs Moses to take his shoes off because he was in holy ground. Uh, we were to come to God's house uh, reverently and and respectfully as we come to receive his gifts of word and sacrament every uh, every Sunday. So hopefully this will help you to uh, focus your attentions on your studies this week. Hopefully you'll be able to um, continue to, to read and meditate on God's word um, as you go through this lesson, as you read through Exodus and Moses and the fiery bush in the burning bush so um until next week i'm pastor krieg have a blessed day mm -hmm.